Phlebotomy, Lesson 3.2, Blood Cells The liquid portion of blood is called plasma. 55% of the blood is plasma. Plasma is the liquid that transports all other cells, hormones, proteins, fats, electrolytes, and fibrinogen. The cellular portion is comprised of erythrocytes, which are red blood cells, leukocytes, which are white blood cells, and thrombocytes, which are platelets. Blood cells are created in the bone marrow and destroyed in the liver. 45% of the blood is comprised of cells. Erythrocytes. Red blood cells have no nucleus or brain so that they can hold more oxygen molecules. They are biconcave in shape, meaning that they're concave on the top and the bottom. They are covered in hemoglobin molecules, which act as magnets to hold on to the oxygen and carbon dioxide molecules. They live 120 days, and they're created in the bone marrow and destroyed in the liver. Red blood cells give blood its red color. There are approximately 5 million red blood cells in each cubic milliliter of blood, about the size of a perfume sample vial. Red blood cells are responsible for transporting gases to and from the lungs and tissues. The Latin term for red blood cells is erythrocyte. White blood cells, or leukocytes, fight infections in the body. There are five different types of white blood cells. And in each cubic milliliter of blood, there are approximately five to 10,000 white blood cells. An elevation of white blood cells can indicate an infection somewhere in the body. And the term leukocyte is the Latin term for white blood cells. White blood cells are called leukocytes. There are five types of white blood cells, neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils. Neutrophils. Neutrophils are the most common type of white blood cell. In fact, they comprise 40 to 60 percent of the total amount of white blood cells in your body. Neutrophils are elevated in bacterial infections. And they're phagocytic cells, which means they eat bacteria and other cells. The lifespan of a neutrophil is between six hours to a few days. Lymphocytes. Lymphocytes circulate primarily in the lymph fluid. However, they can pass out of the lymph system and into the tissues. Lymphocytes become elevated in viral infections. These cells release antibodies, and they assist in the activation of T cells, which are helper cells. The lifespan of a lymphocyte are weeks to years. Monocytes. Monocytes are the largest white blood cell. They're also phagocytic cells, which means that they eat cells and invaders. Monocytes are generally elevated in tuberculosis and intracellular infections, and their lifespan is between hours and days. Eosinophils. Eosinophils are active in antibody-labeled foreign molecules. If the body has seen the invader before, it will have produced antibodies to it. Eosinophils generally become elevated in allergies, skin infections, and parasitic infections. The lifespan for an eosinophil is between 8 and 12 days. Basophils. Basophils carry histamine, which is released in allergic reactions. Their lifespan are a few hours to a few days. The third type of blood cell is a thrombocyte. A thrombocyte, also called a platelet, is a small irregularly shaped cell that assists with clotting. There are approximately 140,000 to 440,000 per cubic milliliter of blood, and on average they live 9 to 12 days. This is a chart for easy reference describing the different types of cells, the normal quantity, the function, and the lifespan. You may print this off for easy reference. Hemostasis. The blood vessels have a mechanism to limit blood loss due to injury or disease. This process is called hemostasis, and it means keeping the blood in a steady state. There are four stages of hemostasis, vasoconstriction, platelet aggregation, coagulation, and fibrinolysis, or clot retraction, 
We'll look at each one of these individually. Vasoconstriction. The blood vessel decreases in diameter to limit the amount of blood delivered to the area of injury. This limits blood loss. This is an immediate shrinking of the blood vessel to limit blood loss and occurs during any injury, such as venipuncture. Platelet aggregation. The platelets congregate at the area of injury to form a temporary plug to limit blood loss. This means that more platelets will be in the area of injury. Coagulation, or tissue repair. This is when the tissue is repaired in a complex cascade of events. The tissue is generally repaired from the inside outward in minor injuries, leaving the platelet plug on the outside to protect against blood loss or infection during the repair process. The final stage of hemostasis is fibrinolysis, or clot retraction. This is when the temporary platelet plug is reabsorbed by the body once the injury has been repaired. On the outside surface of the skin, this can be seen as a scab falling off. Inside the body, the platelet plug is reabsorbed. This slide presents a recap of the four stages of hemostasis. It may be printed off for easy review. Conclusion. You should now have a general understanding of the components of blood, including the three types of blood cells, erythrocytes, leukocytes, and thrombocytes, as well as the five different types of leukocytes and what each does. You should be able to describe how the body reacts to injury to prevent blood loss in a mechanism called hemostasis. Now, progress to the next lesson.